What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. I'm your host, Greg Wave. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, you would know that this vehicle looks way different than anything I have been in before. Uh, the reason being is this is a new car. I've been doing the Lyft Express rental driver whatever program, and that's actually what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. So I was driving a 2016 Chevy Malibu that they gave me. It wasn't a big fan of that car. It felt really small. Um, I am 6'2", so maybe that's why. But this, this guy's got some size to him, and I'm digging him so far. I really am. Uh, seats are a little uncomfortable, but whatever, you know, be a man. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really, really good things about this program. Um, the one thing I will say that if you're driving consistently, like you should at some point consider this or Uber's program. I haven't looked into Uber's program at all, so I'm not going to talk about it at all, but I'm going to give you guys a quick video about Lyft's program. So there's a lot of things to like about this. Uh, when you sign up to do this program, basically how it works is you pay 260 a week and that covers the rental um, insurance, which is commercial insurance, which is a big deal as well as any natural maintenance. So brakes, tires, oil changes. And if you drive regularly, you know that all those things are very important. Um, so from what I've seen, I've used this rental program full-time and I've used it part-time as well. It is a little bit tougher part-time and I'll explain why. Full-time, it's the way to go. If you're gonna be a full-time driver, like I really think you should do this. But there are a lot of things to consider. Um, so the very first thing to consider is going to be your market. Um, because you cannot run both apps on the rental. If you rent it through Lyft, you can only rent through Lyft. I'm assuming, or you can only drive for Lyft. I'm assuming Uber is the same way. So if your market is not good for Lyft, um, you know, you really shouldn't do it. You know, like if you're, when you're out driving, if you're getting 80% Uber rides and like 20% Lyft rides, this is not going to be worth it for you at all because you won't make enough money. But here's how the program works and here's how it kind of can get a little bit better. So like I said, you have that 260 base cost at the uh, at beginning of each week. Now you can actually get money off that cost. So basically they do it by rides. I believe the first one is once you give 75 rides, you get $60 off. So now it's down to $200 a week. Um, once you give 30 more rides after that, I believe you get an additional $30. So now you're up to like 170, I want to say. Um, and then there's the third and final bonus you can get, and you got to do all this in, in the span of a week, um, is then you have to give an additional 55 rides. And um, I'm sorry, an additional... Um, an additional 15 rides and you get $55 off. So basically it's, it's about, I think 105 or 110 rides total. And this might vary by your market. So I'm not positive, but this is how the Phoenix market works. And it should be relatively close to this almost anywhere. Um, so basically you can end up getting like almost $150 off or something like that. Um, which is going to bring your rental cost down, you know, a, a really good amount. So if you're talking that you're paying somewhere around 110 to 115 a week for insurance, um, the car itself, as well as the maintenance, it's actually a really good deal. Uh, and the reason why it's a good deal, like for me personally, that's cheaper than what I pay for my personal vehicle with insurance. And that's not even including the maintenance. Now, I won't lie, I do have a high car payment on my actual car, so that's a lot of the reason why, but still, it's absolutely something to consider. One of the biggest reasons why anyone should consider this is there is no long-term damage to your vehicle. That is like the number one reason that this is worth it. Uh, you do make less on, on this. I believe you only make um, something like... 45 cents a mile versus like 70 and I know that sounds crazy I'm not totally convinced that's the number so don't bash me if that number's off but you can look into it yourself 
but you do make less sense per mile. So that's something you've got to look into. But for me, again, I'm a part-time driver, so I'm not needing to like max out. And personally, I would rather not have the wear and tear on my vehicle. So that's why I do this. One quick thing I'm going to say is there's a lot of ways you can double incentivize this. Um, what I've done before, and this is this is a little trick, but we're steering into a different topic, is I've rented my car on Turo while I'm using the rental car for Lyft. Because I can use the, this rental car for personal use as well. So I'm making money on Lyft, I'm also making money every day renting my car. And that's something for you guys to consider if you haven't looked into Turo. It's app based, it's basically the Airbnb for cars, and um, it's pretty legit. Um, so you can make really good money. But um, let's see. Um, so, yeah, that's the main reason I would, I would consider it is the wear and tear, as well as getting all the oil changes and stuff. Um, you can go into a Pet Boys anytime and they'll take care of the maintenance for you. So, I went in the other day for an oil change and they put three new tires on because apparently I needed them. Um, and like I was saying, brakes, rotors, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, guys, I would definitely look into it. Um, if you're only driving like one week a month, I don't think the program's for you. But if you're driving every week consistently, like I really think it's something that's at least worth looking into. Uh, you have to put down a $250 deposit to get started, but that's pretty much it. Um, the 260 at the beginning of each week, how it works is you just have to do the amount of rides to earn that. So you don't have to pay 260 out of pocket at the beginning of each week, which I also think is nice, but you can't use your express pay until you've made the 260. And then um, the money you get back if you make all the rides are considered bonuses. So they would, so generally what ends up happening is on the weekend, I get a really nice express pay because I end up getting $150 from the rental back at some point. And that's kind of a nice thing to know is as you're driving, it's like, okay, I'm not really making any money on Monday and Tuesday, but then all of a sudden at the end of the week, it, it does feel a little bit better, even though it's really just making back money you're paying. <laughs> but you know, Lyft calls it bonuses. So yeah, guys, that's my video on the express drive. Um, like I said, I think it's worth checking out. You can do it for a week and if you don't like it, return the car. But if you're doing this consistently, I would recommend looking into it because not putting the mileage on your vehicle is a good long-term solution. Again, the trick with Lyft and Uber can be getting so hyped up about a big Friday or Saturday night, but not thinking about the long-term effects on your vehicle. Um, so be considering these things, guys. It's really going to help you. So. You guys know the drill. If you loved the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to hear more info, uh, just subscribe. Dylan's going to be getting more content out. As usual, guys, go crush it on the roads and have a great rest of your day.